If your childhood was lived in the 40s, 70s, surely Geckery Peck is no longer a strange name. As a famous film star and the person honored as the 12th greatest male star of classic Hollywood cinema, Geckery has created many extremely influential works, one of which is The Keys of the Kingdom. Despite his career success, Geckery Peck's life was hit by thorns, and yet the deaths of him and his son also became tragic in the eyes of the public. If you are curious about Geckery Peck, watch this video until the end because we will reveal all the tragedies he went through. Gregory Peck, the iconic American actor of the mid-20th century, left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. His journey into the realm of acting began with a solid foundation as he studied theater at the prestigious neighborhood playhouse under the guidance of the esteemed mentor, Sanford Meisner. The teachings of Meisner laid the groundwork for Peck's future success, introducing him to an approach that would later become renowned as the Meisner Technique. Peck's talents quickly propelled him from the stage to the silver screen, where he became a highly sought-after actor throughout the 1940s and into the late 1970s. With over 50 stage plays, including three on Broadway, under his belt, Peck's transition to cinema was marked by a critical triumph with the 1944 film The Keys of the Kingdom. This success set the stage for a series of noteworthy performances in films such as The Valley of Decision, 1944, Alfred Hitchcock's Spellbound, 1945, and The Yearling, 1946. Despite his initial successes, the ensuing years brought a mix of triumphs and challenges for Peck. While he continued to grace the screen in profitable ventures like The Paradigm Case, 1947, and The Great Sinner, 1948, some of his films faced criticism from the discerning eyes of reviewers. Yet, his enduring popularity and box office success spoke volumes about his undeniable appeal to audiences. Gregory Peck's meteoric rise to global fame in the 1950s and 1960s painted a picture of cinematic success, yet his journey was not without its tragic undertones. The acclaimed actor became an international sensation with roles in iconic films, solidifying his status as a Hollywood legend. In 1951, Peck took on the role of Captain Horatio Hornblower, a performance that resonated with audiences and catapulted him into the spotlight. That same year, he delved into the world of biblical drama with David and Bathsheba, showcasing his versatility as an actor. The tragic thread in Peck's narrative is intertwined with his on-screen partnerships. His collaboration with the captivating Ava Gardner in The Snows of Kilimanjaro, 1952, added another layer to his storied career. However, the ephemeral nature of success became evident in the subsequent years. A pivotal moment came in 1953 when Peck starred alongside the legendary Audrey Hepburn in Roman Holiday a film that not only earned him a Golden Globe Award, but also marked a high point in his career. Yet, behind the glitz and glamour, a sense of melancholy lingered, hinting at the complexities that often accompany fame. As the 1960s and 1970s unfolded, Peck continued to grace the screen with memorable performances in films like The Guns of Navarone, 1961, Cape Fear, 1962, The Omen, 1976, and The Boys from Brazil, 1978. While these roles showcased his enduring talent, the tragic element lay in the personal struggles that often accompany the pressures of sustained success. Gregory Peck, not only left an indelible mark on the silver screen, but also led a life punctuated by both triumphs and heart-wrenching tragedies. Renowned for embodying protagonists of unwavering moral character, Peck's acting prowess garnered praise from critics and audiences alike, elevating every project he touched. The pinnacle of his career came in 1962 when he clinched the Academy Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of Atticus Finch in the adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird. This was just one instance in a career marked by a consistent ability to enhance the quality of any production through his sheer presence. 
Beyond the glitz of Hollywood, Peck was a formidable force in the political arena. In 1947, he fearlessly challenged the House Un-American Activities Committee, establishing himself as a political opponent of President Richard Nixon. His commitment to justice and humanitarian causes did not go unnoticed, and in 1969, President Lyndon B. Johnson honored Peck with the prestigious Presidential Medal of Freedom. Yet, amidst his fulfilling career and political activism, life dealt Peck a devastating blow with the sudden and tragic death of his son, Jonathan. The profound grief that accompanied this loss transcended the realm of work, plunging Peck into a personal abyss of sorrow. Jonathan Peck's life, though promising and filled with noble pursuits, took a tragic turn that left a deep scar on the Peck family. A tall and handsome young man, Jonathan, after completing college, chose a path less traveled by enrolling in the Peace Corps. He dedicated years of his life to Tanzania, working on an agricultural syllabus in Swahili, showcasing a commitment to meaningful endeavors. Returning to California, Jonathan immersed himself in the world of media, working at an L.A. radio station and later a Santa Maria TV station. Described as kind and polite, he stood out for his refusal to succumb to vices, eschewing drugs, and rarely indulging in alcohol. His focus was on realizing his goals and ideals, shunning the typical youthful indulgences of partying. However, behind the facade of ethical living, colleagues detected a darker side to Jonathan's personality. Struggling with self-consciousness and inner turmoil, he concealed his struggles from those around him. The stark contrast between his public persona and private battles hinted at the silent struggles he grappled with. The tragic culmination occurred on an ill-fated summer day in 1975 when Jonathan reached out to his boss, expressing difficulty finding stories. Despite receiving a new assignment that seemed to ignite a spark of excitement, the evening ended in unimaginable sorrow as Jonathan took his own life at the age of 31. The aftermath of Jonathan's death reverberated through the Peck family, particularly devastating his father, Gregory. Ravaged by grief, Gregory, the celebrated actor, halted his career for two years, seeking solace in solitude to mourn the profound loss of his son. The glittering facade of Hollywood fame and a luxurious mansion in the hills above Hollywood couldn't shield Anthony Peck, the youngest son of Hollywood legend Gregory Peck, from the profound darkness that gripped him in the early 90s. Despite the support of his loving and gorgeous wife, supermodel Cheryl Teagues, and the imposing presence of his iconic father, Tony found himself ensnared in a tragic tale of misery, battling a colossal drinking problem that cast a pervasive shadow over his life. Tony's struggle with alcoholism became a recurring theme of self-destruction. Even the enviable marriage to Tyegs failed to bring him solace, as the weight of his addiction placed an unbearable strain on their relationship. The once vibrant connection with his father, Gregory Peck, became a casualty of his destructive behavior, and the repercussions extended to the very core of his personal life. Haunted by the specter of his brother Jonathan's tragic fate, which had left an indelible mark on the Peck family, Tony grappled with the fear that his own drinking might lead him down a similarly devastating path. Witnessing the anguish his brother's suicide had inflicted on their father, he harbored a deep reluctance to subject Gregory to such unimaginable pain again. The turning point in Tony's tumultuous journey came with the shock of his divorce from Tiegs, a heartbreaking consequence of his destructive behavior. The dissolution of his marriage served as a jolting wake-up call, prompting Tony to confront the destructive force of his addiction head-on. Fueled by a newfound determination, he embraced sobriety, breaking free from the chains of alcohol that had held him captive for so long. Returning to Gregory Peck in a poignant exploration of what might have been, one discovers the divergent trajectories that could have unfolded for the Hollywood icon. Despite his illustrious career, Peck's early contemplation of entering the priesthood underscores a road not taken. As a Roman Catholic, the spiritual dimension was a profound aspect of his identity. 
When questioned about his religious beliefs later in life, Peck acknowledged his continued connection to Catholicism, albeit without the zeal of a religious fanatic. His nuanced relationship with the faith was evident as he candidly admitted to occasional disagreements with certain views held by the Pope, particularly on contentious issues like abortion, contraception, and the ordination of women. Nevertheless, Peck remained steadfast in practicing his faith in his own distinct way, navigating the complex intersections of personal conviction and institutional doctrine. The intricacies of Peck's personal life added layers to his narrative. His second marriage, consummated by a justice of the peace rather than a priest, carried the weight of a decision driven by the Church's prohibition on remarriage when a former spouse is still alive. This choice, dictated by religious constraints, marked a poignant divergence from the conventional sacramental rituals associated with marriage. Peck's commitment to his faith extended beyond personal rituals. He generously contributed funds to support the missionary work of a close friend, Father Albert O'Hara, a priest whose endeavors resonated with Peck's sense of philanthropy. Additionally, he assumed the role of co-producer for an audio cassette recording of the New Testament, collaborating with his son, Stephen, in a venture that bridged spirituality and artistic expression. Veronique Peck's life was a tapestry woven with a deep appreciation for the arts, marked by her enduring contributions to cultural and philanthropic endeavors. Born in Paris, France, she crossed paths with her future husband, the legendary actor Gregory Peck, as he journeyed to Italy for the filming of Roman Holiday in 1953. Their formal introduction occurred during an interview for the newspaper France Soir a professional encounter that crackled with an undeniable chemistry. At the age of 23, Veronique relocated to the United States, and on New Year's Eve in 1955, she and Gregory exchanged vows, just one day after the actor finalized his divorce from his first wife, Greta Kukkonen. Unlike his prior marriage, Veronique and Gregory enjoyed a union that stood the test of time, lasting for a remarkable 48 years until Gregory's passing in June 2003. Veronique Peck's commitment to the arts extended far beyond her role as the wife of a Hollywood icon. She played a pivotal role in establishing the Inner City Cultural Center in South Los Angeles and served as the founder of the Los Angeles Music Center. A dedicated fundraiser for the Los Angeles Public Library, she, along with her husband, played a crucial part in raising $50 million for the American Cancer Society in the late 60s. Tragedy struck in 2012 when Veronique, at the age of 80, succumbed to a heart attack at her Los Angeles home. Her passing left a void not only in the cultural landscape she had helped shape, but also in the hearts of her surviving family members. Veronique is survived by her two children, Anthony and Cecilia, a brother and three grandchildren, leaving behind a legacy that transcends the glitz of Hollywood and stands as a testament to a life dedicated to the arts and philanthropy. The final chapter of Gregory Peck's storied life unfolded tragically on June 12, 2003, when, at the age of 87, he peacefully passed away in his sleep after a brief battle with bronco pneumonia. In his last moments, Veronique, his devoted wife, stood by his side, providing comfort as he embarked on his final journey. The iconic actor found his resting place in the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels Mausoleum in Los Angeles, a solemn space that would forever cradle the legacy of a Hollywood legend. The poignant eulogy for Peck, was delivered by his longtime friend and fellow actor, Brock Peters. Peters, known for his role as Tom Robinson, a character defended by Peck's iconic portrayal of Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird, spoke heartfelt words that echoed the profound impact Peck had on both the cinematic world and the lives of those who knew him. The mourning of Gregory Peck became a congregation of stars a testament to the immense influence he wielded in the entertainment industry. The funeral, attended by luminaries such as Harrison Ford, Tony Danza, Michael York, and Harry Belafonte, transformed into a star-studded event. 
Each presence at the ceremony symbolized the collective grief of a community that had lost not just an actor, but a revered figure whose contributions had left an indelible mark on the hearts of many. In 2008, the Peck family sought to immortalize the legacy of Gregory Peck through the creation of the Gregory Peck Award for Cinematic Excellence. This prestigious accolade became a poignant tribute designed to honor the outstanding life's work of directors, producers, or actors who, like Peck, had made indelible contributions to the world of cinema. The inaugural presentations took place at the Dingle International Film Festival in Dingle, Ireland, paying homage to Peck's ancestral roots. The award, a symbol of cinematic distinction, gained resonance over the years. In a heart-rending twist of fate, Gregory Peck's birthplace, San Diego, became the new home for the award ceremony in 2014. This geographic shift added a layer of poignancy, returning the recognition to the city where the Hollywood luminary was born and raised. Recipients of the Gregory Peck Award for Cinematic Excellence form a distinguished roster, each honored for their exceptional contributions to the cinematic arts. Among the celebrated names etched in the award's history are Gabriel Byrne, Laura Dern, Alan Arkin, Annette Bening, Patrick Stewart, and Lawrence Fishburne. Each recipient stands as a testament to the enduring impact of cinematic storytelling, a legacy that Gregory Peck championed throughout his illustrious career. In 2008, the Peck family sought to immortalize the legacy of Gregory Peck through the creation of the Gregory Peck Award for Cinematic Excellence. This prestigious accolade became a poignant tribute designed to honor the outstanding life's work of directors, producers, or actors who, like Peck, had made indelible contributions to the world of cinema. The inaugural presentations took place at the Dingle International Film Festival in Dingle, Ireland, paying homage to Peck's ancestral roots. The award, a symbol of cinematic distinction, gained resonance over the years. In a heart-rending twist of fate, Gregory Peck's birthplace, San Diego, became the new home for the award ceremony in 2014. This geographic shift added a layer of poignancy, returning the recognition to the city where the Hollywood luminary was born and raised. Recipients of the Gregory Peck Award for Cinematic Excellence form a distinguished roster, each honored for their exceptional contributions to the cinematic arts. Among the celebrated names etched in the award's history are Gabriel Byrne, Laura Dern, Alan Arkin, Annette Bening, Patrick Stewart, and Lawrence Fishburne. Each recipient stands as a testament to the enduring impact of cinematic storytelling, a legacy that Gregory Peck championed throughout his illustrious career. One thing that is admirable about him is that in a poignant and reflective gesture, Gregory Peck made a significant contribution to the preservation of cinematic history and his own legacy in 1999. The tragedy here lies in the bittersweet nature of this act, where the acclaimed actor chose to part with a deeply personal collection that spanned his entire career. Peck, recognizing the importance of preserving the art of filmmaking, decided to donate his personal collection of home movies and prints of his feature films to the Film Archive of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. This act went beyond a mere transfer of materials. It was a relinquishing of memories, a part of himself intimately tied to the various characters he had brought to life on the silver screen. The film archive at the Academy became the custodian of Peck's cinematic journey, holding not only the tangible reels of his feature films, but also a piece of the actor's soul captured in the home movies. These artifacts, carefully preserved, became a testament to Peck's dedication to his craft and his contribution to the world of cinema. The tragic undertone lies in the inherent melancholy of letting go of something so personal. The films that Peck donated were not just celluloid reels. They were a reflection of his life's work. A visual diary of the roles he inhabited, the stories he told, and the emotions he conveyed. 
In this act of generosity, Peck essentially entrusted his cinematic legacy to the custodianship of an institution, parting with a piece of himself for the sake of the art form he so deeply revered. The mention of printed materials in the Gregory Peck papers at the Academy's Margaret Herrick Library adds, another layer to the tragedy. It implies that not only the visual, but also the written records of Peck's journey, perhaps scripts with his annotations, personal notes, or correspondence, now reside in an archive, creating a poignant separation between the man and the artifacts that encapsulate his life's work. Eldred Gregory Peck's early life was marked by a tragic connection to historical events. Born on April 5, 1916, in the La Jolla neighborhood of San Diego, California, his parents were Bernice May Bunny and Gregory Pearl Peck. His father, a chemist and pharmacist, hailed from Rochester, New York. Peck's roots were a blend of English, Irish, and Scots heritage. His father's ancestry traced back to England and Ireland, while his mother's lineage included English and Scots origins. Despite this diverse background, Peck's upbringing was predominantly influenced by Catholicism, the religion his mother had embraced after converting from her own faith. The tragedy in Peck's family history unfolded through a familial link to the tumultuous events of the Easter Rising. His paternal grandmother, Catherine Ash, was Irish-born, and through her, Peck was related to Thomas Ash, a key figure in Irish history. Thomas Asha had actively participated in the Easter Rising of 1916, occurring less than three weeks after Peck's birth. Unfortunately, Asha's involvement led to his imprisonment, and he eventually met a tragic end during a hunger strike in 1917, dying while being force-fed. At the tender age of five, his parents underwent a divorce, leading to a separation from his family. Raised by his maternal grandmother, Peck found solace in weekly trips to the movies, a comforting routine that would later influence his future career in acting. However, tragedy struck again when, at the age of 10, Peck was sent to St. John's Military Academy in Los Angeles, a Catholic military school. During his time there, his grandmother, who had been a constant presence in his life, passed away, leaving a significant void. The loss of this maternal figure undoubtedly had a profound impact on young Peck. At 14, Peck faced another upheaval in his life as he moved back to San Diego to live with his father. Adjusting to a new living arrangement, he attended San Diego High School, where he completed his secondary education in 1934. Seeking further academic pursuits, he enrolled at San Diego State Teachers College, now San Diego State University, for a year. During this period, he became involved in various activities, joining the track team and pledging to the Epsilon Eta fraternity. However, tragedy had not yet loosened its grip on his life. Peck's aspirations took a turn when, at the age of 19, he transferred to the University of California, Berkeley. Initially pursuing a path toward medicine as a pre-medical student and majoring in English, Peck stood out not only for his academic pursuits, but also for his physical prowess, rowing on the university crew. Despite his imposing stature at six feet three inches, financial challenges persisted. Despite a remarkably low tuition fee of $26 per year, Peck found himself struggling to make ends meet, eventually taking on the role of a hasher, kitchen helper, for the Gamma Phi Beta sorority in exchange for meals. Eldred Gregory Peck's journey took a transformative turn during his years at the University of California, Berkeley, where he faced both personal and academic challenges. Despite the hardships, this period marked a crucial chapter in Peck's life, ultimately leading him to discover his passion for acting. At Berkeley, Peck's resonant and well-modulated voice set him apart and drew attention. It was this distinctive quality that caught the eye of those around him. Intrigued by the possibilities, he decided to venture into the world of acting after participating in a public speaking course. 
An acting coach recognized the potential in him and believed he was perfect material for university theater. This encouragement sparked a growing interest in acting within Peck. Under the guidance of Edwin Duer, the director of the university's Little Theater, Peck found a platform to explore his newfound passion. Duer, recognizing Peck's talent, recruited him to participate in the university's theatrical productions. During his senior year, Peck took on challenging roles in five plays, showcasing his versatility. Notably, he portrayed Starbuck in a production of Moby Dick, a role that likely demanded a deep understanding of character and a strong stage presence. Reflecting on his years at Berkeley, Peck later expressed that it was a profoundly special experience for him, considering it woke me up and made me a human being. This sentiment highlighted the transformative impact of his time at the university on his personal and artistic growth. The challenges and triumphs he faced on the stage contributed to shaping the actor he would become. In a poignant gesture in 1996, Peck donated $25,000 to the Berkeley rowing crew as a tribute to his coach, the renowned Kai Ebright. This act not only emphasized his gratitude for the support he received during his rowing days, but also underscored the lasting impact of his Berkeley years on his life's trajectory. What do you think about the tragic life and death of Gregory Peck and his son? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.